Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about our third type of weathering, which is weathering through ice or sometimes called ice weathering. Now, before we get into our specific topic for today of ice weathering, we're first gonna kind of backtrack a little bit and talk about what weathering is. Now, weathering is the process of breaking down, wearing away, or changing the appearance of land due to the exposure of water, wind, and ice. And as we talked about in the past couple of days, in the past couple of videos, we see that water can create things such as sea arches and that picture on the bottom left uh, through waves over time crashing into these rocks and slowly breaking it down. In the last video, we discussed wind weathering and how over time wind are picking up these uh, small particles of rock and sand and kind of hitting it against uh, larger pieces of rock or earth. And over time, as these wind is blowing these smaller particles into these larger rocks and other uh, parts of earth, they're slowly wearing it down. And today we're gonna be talking about the final uh, kind of way of weathering which is weathering through ice. And ice is really interesting because it actually uh, has two different types of weathering uh, or way it weathers uh, rocks and other surfaces of earth over time. The first one is called frost wedging. Now frost wedging is when water gets into a crack and freezes. And as the water freezes, it expands and makes the crack larger. Now, frost wedging, uh, this doesn't just happen once. Not one kind of thing of ice getting in there, or water getting in, freezing, and breaking it up. If we look at this picture on the right, and I'm going to kind of draw an arrow to it, we see that there's this huge crack in this rock. This rock was actually once one rock, but as you see, as I circle it in green, there is this huge crack in the middle. And this is what happens, uh, or this is the result of frost wedging. And not just one instance, but multiple instances of frost wedging. And frost wedging takes small cracks in rocks and expands them. And we can see from this image on the left, there's this small crack right here. And I'm pointing to it in red and water fills into that small crack. And as water seeps into these small cracks in the uh, rock, if you're in a cold enough environment, if you're in a cold enough area, we know that water can change states of matter. And as water uh, gets colder and colder and colder, it will eventually go from a liquid into a solid. And as it goes into a solid, it goes into ice. And ice expands. And as ice, uh, as water gets colder and goes from a solid into, or liquid, excuse me, into a solid, it begins to push against the rock. And so each time that water seeps in and freezes, it gets a little bit bigger. But as we know, seasons change, or as we know that, you know, that the one day, if it's shun, sunny and shiny, and excuse me, y'all, sunny and shiny uh, outside, like there's the, the sun is out, the next day, it may be cold. And so what happens is eventually this frozen water, this block of ice will eventually melt back into water into its liquid form and that's what happens in this last kind of image on the picture on the right is once the water evaporates or once it goes away it leaves this break in the rock so this is the first type of the way that ice weathers uh the surface of the earth especially rocks over time is through this idea of frost wedging of multiple instances of water seeping into small cracks. And if it's cold enough outside, turning into ice, expanding. And then once it gets warmer outside, 
that ice will turn back into a liquid and the crack will still be there, but that liquid water will go out of that crack. The second way that it can occur, that ice uh, weathers the surface of the earth over time is through a process called glaciation. Now, that's a big word. And we really have to focus on what the root of the word is and what it kind of sounds like. So glaciation kind of sounds like glaciers. And if you've ever had a conversation or heard about glaciers or big chunked blocks of ice in the North and South Pole and towards like uh, the poles of the earth, Glaciation is weathering caused by massive glaciers uh, scouring the earth. So the weight of this movement of the glaciers breaks down the rocks beneath it. And during the periods when Earth's climate cools, glaciers form and begin to flow down slope. So what does that mean? We think of glaciers as these big things floating on ice, or on water, excuse me, uh, in the poles. However, during the ice age and during colder periods of Earth's history, glaciers used to be a lot more common. And what happened, very similar to frost wedging, is uh, when a glacier, or when a uh, glacier began to form in these kind of valleys that were already there, the glacier began to push the walls of the, um, of the valley and create this U-shaped valley. Now this is really uh, important. And this is something that is actually really uh, characteristic of glaciation and that it forms U-shaped valleys. Now the reason it forms uh, if it forms U-shaped valleys is because when we talked about water weathering, remember how when we talked about how rivers, as they flow, uh, as rocks kind of are exposed to flowing water over time, they begin to smooth out. So do these, uh, these areas where these big glaciers are there. So as these glaciers form and begin to flow or begin to kind of move, they take these big chunks of earth and they break down the rocks underneath it. And eventually they form these big U-shaped valleys. But I want you to remember, I want you to be critical thinkers. That's when earth climate cools, when it's cold, when things like the ice age. But here, in today's age, some of these glaciers are melting. And some of the, we know that ice, these glaciers are made of ice. And so when these uh, glaciers begin to melt and go into a liquid form of water, they sometimes, if we look at this picture to the right, they create lakes. So they create these valleys. And at the bottom of these valleys, and sometimes these valleys, they can create lakes. And so glaciation always form these U-shaped valleys. They always form these U-shaped valleys, but many times they can form lakes or rivers through these valleys that they created because of the water that was already flowing through it. And so these are kind of where these lakes and these rivers began to form through these big process of glaciation. So, Let's look at a couple pictures, a couple of examples. One really common example of frost wedging is, as we see here on this picture of the left, if you guys have ever been to a snowy place, or in general, we know that there are a lot of potholes. We know that there is a lot of areas where the um, roads aren't so nice. And when these roads aren't so nice, it's not because the people that put it there Right, like, ah, we're going to put a big hole right here. They weren't doing that. When, that. when that was originally paved, when the road was originally made, it was smooth, it was flat. 
However, as water began to seep, and especially in these colder areas, and we can see at this picture, there's a lot of snow in the, in the background. Here, I'm circling in black on the sides of the picture. These water seeped into some of these uh, small cracks and began to break apart the cement and break apart the foundation of the pavement that these roads were made on. And of course, the picture on the right is another glacier, uh, another valley formed through glaciation. And we know it's formed through glaciation because we see it creates this U shape. So in summary, water uh, weathering is the breaking down of um, or wearing away and changing of the land due to the exposure of water, wind, and ice. In the instance of ice, there are two forms of ice weathering. The first is when the ice uh, through a process called frost wedging, in which small water seeps through small cracks, and as water freezes, it expands. And once that temperature gets warmer, the water goes back into a liquid, but it leaves that expanded area still there. And the second way is through glaciation. And this is when big glaciers form these U-shaped valleys and are able to do these amazing things in nature. And they create U-shaped valleys and many times form different types of lakes at the bottom of them or rivers. So I hope this helps, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.